my name is Gunnar Sambarina. This is an English lesson. The topic of our lesson is the world of work, the relative clause. I wanted to answer the question, how do you feel today? If you're feeling good, please bend left. If you're feeling not so good, bend right. I think we're ready to start our lesson. I will tell you the description of one picture. You should listen to it carefully and draw everything you hear. Please follow my directions. Compare your picture with this described one. Do you have the same pictures? Well done! Today at the lesson you will know how first to match a particular job with an appropriate CV, to complete CV using given information, to define kind of relative clauses, and to use an appropriate relative clause, and the last to use words job and word properly. Now we are talking to talk about weird and dangerous jobs around the world. First is gum busters. You know when you are chewing gum and you get that uncontrollable desire to stick it under something? We all do it. A Dutch chemist created the gum cart, a machine that removes gum in just 5 seconds. And gum busters get a lot of contracts to remove gum from parks, stadiums and etc. As long as people keep sticking chewing gum on the tables, and benches the business will be kept. Number two is dice inspectors. Dice inspectors work for a variety of companies. State authorities, casinos and even dice manufacturers tend to employ people to inspect dice. The dice needs to be as perfect as a cube. The idea is to prevent the possibility of cheating. That the job requires a great deal of training and precision, inspectors have to prove to be studious people who can be trusted to take the time to learn about this job. Next profession is whistlers. Professional whistlers lend their talents to television shows, movies, commercials and other media to give delightful music to their listeners. Henry Brandy a 58-year-old Welsh whistling performer. A whistler is an artist just like an actor or musician. He told Fox News. My profession has taken me across the world and allowed me to touch people's hearts. To be a professional whistler, not only do you need the talent, Brady also stresses the importance of self-confidence and experience. Next is lion tamers. Lion taming is a practice of animal training that involves taming lions for protection or environment, especially in the circus. Other big cats are tamed too, such as leopards, jaguars, cheetahs and tigers. Lion taming is a very dangerous occupation because of the obvious risk of walking with powerful instinctive carnivores. This job exists in zoos all across the world to enable less dangerous feeling and to bring more profit by practicing circus demonstrations. Snake milkers. Now it may sound crazy, but there are some people that choose to work with snakes, the deadly ones. Snake milkers have a dangerous job. They milk snakes for their venom. This means that the snake milkers touch poisonous snakes every day. Snake venom plays an important role in science. It can be used for antivenoms and medicines. Snake milkers are doing something great for the world because the venom they extract can be used to create antivenom. Now I want to discuss with your partner. Which one would you like to apply for? What characteristic do you think you would have to have in order to get that job. 
and what do you think you should do in order to get that job? Well done. Some people are applying for these jobs. Can you help them to discover which job fits them best? Read these parts of their curriculum vitae and match. But before, I want to discuss with your partner what is curriculum vitae or CV. Have you ever heard this word? So, CV provides an overview of your person's experience and other qualifications. In some countries, a CV is typically the first item that a potential employer asks for. Read the following CVs. First one is Elizabeth Roberts. She is 26. Her current employment shop assistant. Her work experience as waitress in Delicious and shop assistant in Gap. She has spoken Spanish and Portuguese, basic information technology skills, and she is a good team worker. And she wants to find a part time job. Next is Jane Peterson. He is 21, a clothes designer. She uh, works in a shop assistant, Old Navy, student in the culture of architecture, advanced information technology skills, hard working and patience. And the type of the work uh, of the job required is full time job. Next is Richard Jameson, he is 41, now he is unemployed, his work experience is guitarist in the Moon Band, drama in High Spirits Band and salesman in the Music House. He has advanced musical knowledge and he is also hard working. He looks for a full-time job. And the last is Peter Sanders. He's, uh, 32, he is wet and he worked at zoo as zookeeper, dog food tester in cans and wet in cat dog, qualified in first aids, basic Spanish knowledge and very patient. He is looking for full-time job. And check the answers. Eliza Roberts um, is better for gum buster. Dice Inspectors requires Jane Peterson skills, Whistler Richard Jameson, and Peter Lion Tamer. Now we are going to play a game Who is Needed? There is a word hidden under the dirt, and you need to guess who is needed. Needed, a uh, who is good at math and has more than five years experience working with kids. Of course, it's a teacher or math teacher. The next one. Someone for the kids magazine to illustrate comics. How do you think? Check your idea. Of course, it's painter. The next. Someone has acting experience in soap operas. Yes, of course, it's an actor. Someone whose specific field is photos of different things. Yes, that was the easiest one, the photographer. A person who has a year experience in working in any shop. Yes, it's shop assistant. Someone who doesn't who has not less than four year experience in treating animals, especially cats and dogs. It's vet. Now uh, I wanted to complete a CV form. Imagine that you're applying for one of the jobs we've read about and think about qualities you'll need for that 
Look at the CV form and complete it using the information below. So um, you can see the CV form and the information you need to use for this form. My name is Dominique Dupont. I live in Cannes at 26 Avenue de la Mer. I'm 23 years old. I was born on the 22nd March 1990. You can send me an email via my website and my mobile phone number is 33-7456-322-114. I attended high school in Cairns until I passed my baccalaureate, bachelorate in 2008. I've just finished a two-year training course in business management and now I have a diploma in management. My IT skills are excellent and I can speak and write English well. I did a summer job in techno diagnostics in Cairns working with the sales manager, Mr. Daniel Blanc. I'm hardworking and get on easily with people. I'm not afraid of responsibility or challenges. So use the information you need for the CV. Okay, let's check your progress. Her, na her name is her surname is Dupont. Her first name is Dominique. The address is 26 Avenue de la Mercans. Check your phone number and email address. The date of birth is 22nd March 1990. Your qualifications is bachelorate. She has a diploma in management and she worked as sales manager in techno diagnostic. Her personal qualities are hardworking, sociable and responsible. Okay, I want you to guess the occupation. Now we are going to play in a game. You are going to read the definition and try to guess the name of the profession. The first one. He is always available to help people. He wears a uniform with a cap. He saves people from danger. What is his job? Yes, it's a policeman. Next, he wears a red uniform with a helmet. He saves people from fire. He is brave. What's his job? Of course, it's a fireman. He wears a white uniform and gloves. He helps people. He works in a hospital. What's his job? Of course, it's a doctor. He wears a uniform and sometimes a big white hat. He makes bread and cakes. He works in a bakery. What is his job? It's a baker. She serves food and drinks and she works in a restaurant. What is her job? Yes, it's a waitress. And if it's a male? Yes, of course, it's waiter. Guess the occupation. A person who serves food in a plane isn't? Write down the correct answer. A woman who acts in a field? A man whose job is to repair cars and mopeds? A person who drives a bus? A person whose job is to teach students in a school. And let's check. First is a hostess. Number two, actress. Number three, mechanic. Number four, bus driver. And the last is teacher. So I wanted to pay attention on the phrases that are in bold. Why do we need to use relative clause? We use relative clauses to give additional information about something without starting another sentence. By combining sentences with a relative clause, your text becomes more fluent and you can avoid repeating certain words. 
So, how to form the relative clothes? Imagine that a girl is talking to Tom. You want to know who she is and ask a friend where he knows her. You could say, a girl is talking to Tom. Do you know the girl? That sounds rather complicated, doesn't it? It, be, it would be better if you uh, use relative clause. You put both pieces of information together. Start with the most important thing. You want to know who the girl is. So, do you know the girl? As your friend cannot know which girl you are talking about, you need to put in the additional information. The girl is talking to Tom. Use the girl only in the first part of the sentence. In the second part, replace it with the relative pronoun. For example, use the relative pronoun who. So the final sentence is, do you know the girl who is talking to Tom? I want you to pay attention on the relative pronouns. So first is who. It's subject or object pronoun for people. I told you about the woman who lives next door. Which we use it to refer subject or object pronoun for animals and things. For example, do you see the cat which is lying on the roof? Which also refers to a whole sentence. He couldn't reach, which surprised me. Whose? Possession for people, animals and things. Do you know the boy whose mother is a nurse? Next. Whom? Object pronoun for people, especially in non-defining relative clauses. In defining relative clauses, we colloquially prefer who. I was invited by the professor whom I met at the conference. And that. Subject or object pronoun for people, animals and things in defining relative clauses. Who or which are also possible. For example, I don't like the table that stands in the kitchen. We can replace that with which. Relative adverbs. A relative adverb can be used instead of relative pronoun plus preposition. This often makes the sentence easier to understand. This is a shop in which I bought my bike. This is a shop where I bought my bike. Look at the relative pronouns. First is when. The meaning is in which or on which. We use it when we refer to time expression. For example, the day when I met him. Next, where. We use it when we mean in which or at which. It refers to a place. For example, the place where we met him. And why. For which. We use it to refer to a reason, for example, the reason why we met him. I want you to complete the sentences with the endings from the box. And the first sentence is given as an example. The film is about a man who lives in New York. Don't forget to use correct relative pronoun. Let's check your progress. First is, was an example. Number two. I can't stand people who are always late. A bilingual dictionary is a book which or that tells you how to say words in another language. Four. The hospital is a place where they try to make people better. 5. Bill Gates is the man who created Microsoft. And 6. A widow is a woman whose husband has died. Subject or object pronoun. Subject and object pronouns cannot be distinguished by their forms who, which, that are used for subject and object pronouns. But you can distinguish them as follows. If the relative pronoun is followed by a verb, the relative pronoun is a subject pronoun. 
So, subject pronouns must be always used. For example, the apple which is lying on the table. If the relative pronoun is not followed by a verb, but by a noun or pronoun, the relative pronoun is an object pronoun. Uh, so they can be dropped in defining relative clauses, which are then called contact clauses. The apple which George lay on the table. Or we can say the apple George lay on the table. Let's do some practice. Define if the relative pronoun is not necessary uh, in any of the sentences, put a cross next to the sentence. So the first one is given as example. The film of the story of her life made an impact that many people will never forget. So we may draw, draw drop the uh, relative pronoun. Sentence 2. Diane lived in a heart which had no electricity. Number 3. The story which she told in the film made Diane Fossey a household name. 4. The clothes that she wore in the jungle were old and worn. 5. The place where she grew up has a different sort of beauty. 6. The people who made the film about Diane immediately realized the remarkable effect that her story has on whoever sees it. Let's check your ideas. So we can drop relative pronouns in sentence 3, 4 and 5. Defining and re uh, relative clause. So there are two types of relative clauses, defining and non-defining. Defining clauses give detailed information defining a general term or expression. Defining relative clauses are not put in commas. Imagine, Tom is in the room with five girls. One girl is talking to Tom and you ask somebody where he knows the girl. Here the relative clause defines which of the five girls you mean. Do you know the girl who is talking to Tom? Defining relative clauses are often used in definitions. A seaman is someone who walks on a ship. Non-defining relative clauses. They um, give additional information on something but do not define it. Non-defining relative clauses are put in commas. Imagine, Tom is in the room with only one girl. The two are talking to each other and you ask somebody whether he, he knows this girl. Here the relative clause is non-defining because in this situation it's obvious which girl you mean. Do you know the girl who is talking to Tom? Note that in non-defined relative clauses, who, which may not be replaced with that. For more information about relative clause, please uh, visit the website. Okay, now I want you to decide if these relative clauses are defining or non-defining. Put D if it's defining and ND if it's non-defining. First, London, which is the capital of England, is one of the largest cities in the world. Two, this is a dress my mother has made for me. Three, Queen Elizabeth II, who is 83, has been the Queen of England for 57 years now. Four, that's the dog that bit me. 5. Tom Cruise, who has starred, starred a lot of films, is a famous American actor. 6. The village where I grew up is very small. 
7. Greg, whose job involves traveling a lot, has been in nearly all the countries in the world. 8. The office I have just rented is near my home. 9. This is the officer that arrested the burglar. 10. Lady Gaga, who is a well-known pop star, is only 24. Let's check your answers. First is um, non-defining, second defining, number three non-defining, four defining, five non-defining, six defining relative clause, seven non-defining, eight and nine are defining relative clause, and the last is non-defining. Good job. Uh, good job or good work? Do you know which is the correct? Now we are going to watch a video and find the difference between the words job and work. Write down at least three examples for each word. Hi everyone. Today's word combination is going to be very familiar for you, so some of you who are learning English. Today what we're going to look at is the difference between job and work. Both of these words are nouns and we use them in the relation in, to talk about earning money. But job is the countable noun that describes your position inside a company. Some examples of jobs include receptionist, director, designer, or nurse. Work, on the other hand, describes the activity or activities that you do in your job. Work is an uncountable noun. So a doctor's work might consist of seeing patients, helping people get better, prescribing medicines, or talking to patients. All of those things together constitutes, constitute the work of a doctor. Similarly, an architect's work includes designing buildings, learning about construction techniques, having meetings with clients, and choosing construction materials. That's not everything that an architect does, but it forms part of the work, the uncountable noun that describes what an architect does every day. So remember, the job is the position, and work is all the things you do in that job or that position. I hope you found this video useful. Please visit the blog at stop-spanglish dot blogspot dot ca or if you would like more information on English on classes of English for Spanish speakers of English please visit the website at www.stopspanglish.com mm -hmm. now check your pro comprehension job it means your position in the company for example receptionist director designer or nurse and work means the activity or activities that you do in your job for example if you are a doctor you help people get better you see patients you prescribe medicines or you talk to patients assess yourself so you achieved if you have written the explanation of difference between job and work and you have at least three examples for each word. If you have less, it means that you're working towards. Look at these jobs. Which of them do you think are most valuable to your society? Explain why.
work with your partner. Choose the three jobs which might attract people to particular jobs. Being your own boss, company car, flex time, occupational pension, opportunity for creativity, and opportunity to travel. And while listening to your partner, I want you to assess his or her work. For if you think that student speaks for one minute and student's ideas are clear, it means that he or she is a chief. And if it's not so, it means that it's working towards. Well done. Work with your partner again and add uh, eight more things to the list. Also use this assessment guide to assess your partner. Good job. Now you are going to listen to eight people talking about their jobs. You need to find out the answer for the following questions. Which job is each person talking about? What does each person like and dislike about their job? And why is a speaker in each job? Unit 7. Listening. Exercise 1. 1. When I was at school, I decided I definitely wanted a career, and I thought of what I could do that involved working with other people. Um, I'd had various Saturday jobs working um, as a hairdresser, and it was only until I got an apprenticeship that I really thought this is what I want to do with my career. I love the work because you meet different people every day. Um, you can be creative, which is important to me. I suppose if there are any downsides, it's that sometimes you can get other people's hair on your clothes and uh, that can take some picking off. But on the whole, it's something I really love doing. Two. Well, this job found me, really. Um, a friend recommended me and uh, so I did a job for somebody and it seemed to work out quite well. I never fancied doing a run-of-the-mill job, sort of nine-to-five sort of thing, and I quite like the secrecy of the job, I think, really. You do have to do some boring office work, but the best bit's out on the street. Um, I'm quite a private man by nature, so it sort of suits me. And uh, detective work, well, it's, it's laborious at times, but quite rewarding too. Three. Well, initially I wanted to be an actress, and then I realised um, <laughs> that wasn't going to happen. So um, I've always been keen on fitness, and I used to go to a judo class um, every week, then got more and more interested and sort of went three or four times a week. And it was my teacher there that sort of suggested to me um, why I didn't become a stunt woman. So uh, he introduced me to somebody, and I've been on sets ever since, really. Uh, there's a lot of travel which sometimes gets me down, but I do get to meet the famous people, which is great. Um, and I travel the world, which is something I've always really wanted to do. So I've involved everything that I really love, traveling and fitness and meeting famous people. So I really enjoy my work. Four. Well, I sort of got into it by accident, really. I needed a bit of extra um, money in the summer holidays. And um, I've always liked the, uh, you know, the outdoors and uh, getting out in the mornings and all that sort of thing. So uh, I just decided to give it a try and uh, keep on going. It was reasonably lucrative. You know, it's not a great sort of one for money, but uh, you do get cash, which is the one thing I like in this job. Uh, you know, it, it goes straight in your hand. And um, and I like the, the exercise. Uh, you know, it, it is. It's quite sort of strenuous work. Uh, and, uh, you know, you get out in the mornings, um, you have a bit of a scrub around. And uh, the nice thing is the satisfaction is the is people's faces, looking at people's faces uh, afterwards when they realise they can actually see outside again. Five. Well, at school I'd always been really interested in uh, fitness. Um, I was actually a gym champion when I was young. And um, then I decided what to do when I grew up. And, um, yeah, it was, it was a really good choice in the end because what I really like is helping other people to get fit and to actually bring the best out of them. 
Um, I can advise them what to do and what not to do, what's best for their muscles. And, um, yeah, it's really worthwhile. I suppose the thing I don't like about it is that it's sometimes a bit insecure. Like, I, I did have a job, actually, in a health club once, but I didn't like that so much. So now I'm just freelance, and I suppose it's a bit insecure, but on the whole, I really like it. Six. Well, first of all, I, I did an English degree and, uh, and I didn't know what to do really after that. And uh, I wanted to sort of get out and, you know, do a job where you sort of meet a lot of people. And so I fell into this job, really. Um, it's great, you know, because the hours are sort of uh, very long, but, you know, you get to sort of meet a lot of interesting people. And, uh, you know, the things, the things I really like about it is that, you know, you're always breaking a, a story. So whatever you get involved in, it's, you know, it's, it's really sort of quite interesting and it's quite sort of cutting edge, you know. And, uh, I mean, I suppose the thing I don't like about it is that people always say that journalists are sort of, you know, the scum of the earth sort of thing. But, you know, I, I don't agree, really. I, I think we do a very worthwhile job. I think that, you know, if someone stands up, sort of sticks their head, you know, above the parapet and that, it's sort of, and they're famous, then, you know, it's in the public's interest to sort of find out as much as, as possible about them. You know, and that's what I do. Seven. I think it was clear to my family what I was going to be when I grew up from quite an early age. I'm the eldest of five, and um, my brothers and sisters always came to me for advice. Um, and in the end, actually, my mum used to come to me for advice, or she'd like to talk things over, or, or as, a, as a family, we like to try and find out why things happened as they did, and, and that sort of thing. So at school, we didn't really study psychology as a, a subject on its own, but um, as part of biology, we did look at the way people work and, and why they do what they do. Um, it was a long training, but something that's absolutely worthwhile. My belief and commitment in, in human beings, I suppose, is, is what made me become a psychologist. Um, I suppose if there's anything that I find disappointing, uh, at the same time, it has to be a benefit. And that's that if I've had a chat with someone or I've helped someone, I can't necessarily see the changes in them in their everyday lives. So um, I suppose I just have to look very closely when they come and see me next time. But it's, it really is the best job in the world to me. Eight. Yes, I was an only child, uh, no brothers and sisters. Uh, my mother left my father when I was about uh, seven years old. So every holidays from school, I used to be with my father. I used to follow him everywhere. And his job was a sports commentator for motor racing, Formula One. And so he travelled all over the world following the races, and I went with him. Um... I suppose it was inevitable in a way that I was going to follow him into that. He, uh, a couple of times he actually gave me the microphone uh, when I was a little boy to, and I spoke and it, it, it went out on television. I met all the famous drivers and uh, the smell of the pit lane and the noise from the cars and everything was um, was very powerful uh, thing that led me into this, into this profession. Uh, now, no, I don't like it. Um, I feel under pressure. I don't see enough of my own family. I'm travelling all over the world. I have two children. And as soon as I can, as soon as my children are old enough, they're at school, um, I'll, I'll pack it in. I'll retire. I'll, you know, go past the chequered flag. <laughs> because um, I've had enough. Check your ideas. So first was hairdresser. Number two is defective. Number three, stunt woman. Four is window cleaner. Five, fitness instructor. Six, journalist. Seven, psychologist. And eight, sport commentator. Now uh, I wanted to divide in three groups and discuss which of the eight jobs appeals to you and why. While listening to your partners, I wanted to assess their work. And the descriptor is, first, if student makes up not less than five sentences and student doesn't make um, errors in grammar and in pronunciation, Ideas are expressed in a pretty clear manner. It means that they are achieved. I want you to look at the learning objectives of our lesson bag. First was to match a particular job with an appropriate CV. I hope that you know how to do it. 
Second, to complete CV using given information. Number three, to define kind of relative clause, to use an appropriate relative clause, and to use words, job and work properly. Please fill in the self-evaluation sheet, answer the questions. What have I understood? What haven't I understood? What have I learned and how do I evaluate my skills, not the knowledge? Your home task is, imagine that you're going to a desert island to, give there, to live there for a year. Think about people of which professions you would choose to take with you and explain why. You can only take five people. List of the literature that helped prepare the lesson. You can find the lesson on the website. Thank you for attention and goodbye.